What's going on guys? Welcome back for another video. If you are new here, welcome to the channel. Let's get straight into it as I want to respect your time. Today we're going to be looking at Avalanche, Cosmos, and Polkadot, some of the largest cryptos in this space. We're going to be comparing them looking at scalability, their decentralization, their latency, and their interoperability. Furthermore, let's dive in. So right before we dive in, just wanted to say this is not financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only, but we're going to be looking at the network effects and what could be a better long-term hold. So to start it off, I'm going to be doing a brief intro on Cosmos for anyone who is not familiar with it, same as Polkadot and Avalanche. So if you are familiar with these ecosystems or project at the bare minimum, I'm going to timestamp it and feel free to skip ahead. And if you are not, no worries, let's dive in. So looking here at Cosmos, the ticker is Adam, looking over to the right, ATOM. So Cosmos is a heterogeneous network of many independent parallel blockchains, each powered by classical BFT consensus algorithms like Tendermint. Developers can easily build custom application-specific blockchains called zones through the Cosmos SDK software development kit. These zones connect to hubs, which are specifically designed to connect zones together. A little look into the larger vision of Cosmos is they intend to have thousands of zones and hubs that are interoperable through the Inter Blockchain Communication Protocol, also known as IBC. Cosmos can also connect to other systems through PEG zones, which are specifically designated zones that each are custom made to interact with another ecosystem, such as Ethereum and Bitcoin. Cosmos does not use sharding and will use each zone and hub being sovereign with their own validator set, which is super interesting. And you can see some graphics here looking at the network. Cosmos has done an amazing job growing dApps within their network. And also the main reason people are bullish on Cosmos, in my opinion, is because of IBC as it is the way to connect everything. So in April of 2021, Cosmos hit a historic milestone by launching IBC the Cosmos standard for blockchain interoperability. IBC enables independent blockchains to connect, transact, exchange tokens, and other data, scale, and thrive in an interconnected network. So here we are looking at a quick intro into Polkadot. Looking to the right, the ticker is DOT. So Polkadot is a heterogeneous blockchain protocol that connects multiple specialized blockchains into one unified network. It achieves scalability through a sharding infrastructure with multiple blockchains running in parallel, called parachains. That connect to a central chain called the relay chain. Developers can easily build custom application-specific parachains through the substrate development frame. So here we are diving a little bit further into Polkadot. So to the right, we can see a photo of what is known as a parachain. And then to the left, let's dive in a little bit further of some components of a parachain. So looking at A, we can see A is here, kind of the gray circle. So that is the relay chain, and that is responsible for managing its shared security across cross-chain interoperability and building consensus. Now looking at B, we can see that B is basically the parachains, which are right here. They kind of look like, um, what do they look like? They look like parachutes. So they are heterogeneous blockchains that are connected to Polkadot, and then looking at C, which are para-threads up here. Para-threads are similar to parachains, but abide by the pay-as-you-go model as there are different payment models for Polkadot. And then looking at D, D are bridges, and these connect parachains with external networks like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So now getting into it, looking to our left, the relay chain validates the state transition of connected parachains, providing shared state across the entire ecosystem. If the relay chain must revert for any reason, then all of the other parachains would also revert. This is to ensure that the validity of the entire ecosystem can persist and no individual part is corruptible. So looking down here, the shared state makes it so that the trust assumptions when using parachains are only those of the relay chain validator set and no other. Interoperability is enabled between parachains through cross-chain message passaging known as XCMP protocol and it's also possible to connect to other systems through bridges, which we looked at previously, which are specifically designed parachains and parathreads that are each custom made to interact with another ecosystem, such as Ethereum or Bitcoin, for example. Now looking to our right, they are connected to and secured by the central relay chain, which is the gray circle here, and benefit from the security, scalability, and interoperability and governance of Polkadot. Polkadot's cross-chain composability allows any type of data or asset to be sent between parachains, opening up a host of new use cases and applications. 
Parachains can also connect to external networks such as Bitcoin and Ethereum using cross-network bridges. Last but not least, taking a look into Avalanche, also known as AVAX. So looking to the right, the ticker is AVAX. So Avalanche is a platform of platforms, ultimately consisting of thousands of subnets to form a heterogeneous, interoperable network of many blockchains that takes advantage of the revolutionary Avalanche consensus protocol to provide a secure, glob globally distributed, interoperable, and trustless framework offering unprecedented decentralization whilst being able to comply with regulatory requirements. So diving a little bit further, looking into AVAX, Avalanche allows anyone to create their own tailor-made application-specific blockchain supporting multiple custom virtual machines such as EVM and WASM and written in popular languages like Go with others coming in the near future rather than lightly used poorly understood languages like Solidity which is used to build Ethereum. This virtual machine can be deployed on a custom blockchain network called a subnet which consists of a, of a dynamic set of validators working together to achieve consensus on the state of a set of many blockchains where complex rule sets can be configured to meet regulatory compliance. Now looking over here to the right, Avalanche was built with serving financial mar markets in mind. It has native support for easily creating and trading digital smart assets with complex custom rule sets that define how the asset is handled and traded to ensure regulatory compliance can be met. Interoperability is enabled between blockchains within a subnet as well as between subnets. Like Cosmos and Polkadot, Avalanche is also able to connect to other systems through bridges, through custom virtual machines made to interact with another ecosystem such as Ethereum and Bitcoin. So now we're gonna dive into scalability, looking across Cosmos, Avalanche, and Polkadot and comparing them. Also, if you can leave a like and show any support, it is greatly appreciated. So looking over here to the left at Cosmos, each zone and hub in Cosmos is capable of up to a thousand transactions per second when with bandwidth being bottled, bottleneck in consensus. Cosmos aims to have thousands of zones and hubs all connected through IBC, there is no limit on the number of zones slash hubs that can be created, which is super nice. Now looking at Avalanche, Avalanche is capable of around 4,500 transactions per second per subnet. That is based on modest hardware requirements to ensure maximum decentralization of just two CPU cores and a four gig of memory and with a validator size of over 2,000 nodes. Performance is CPU bound and if higher performance is required, then more specialized subnets can be created with higher minimum requirements to be able to achieve 10,000 transactions plus within a subnet. Avalanche aims to have thousands of subnets, each with multiple virtual machines slash blockchains. All interoperable with each other, there is no limit on the number of subnets that can be created. Now looking over to the furthest, to the right, we have Polkadot. So parachains and Polkadot are also capable of up to 1,500 transactions per second. A portion of the parachain slots on the relay chain will be designated as part of the parathread pool. The performance of a parachain is split between many parathreads, offering lower performance and compete amongst themselves in per block auction to have their transactions included in the next relay chain block. The number of parachains is limited by the number of validators on the relay chain and Polkadot hopes to have 100 parachains. So now looking at results, in regard to scalability, all three platforms offer vastly superior performance to the likes of Bitcoin and Ethereum 1.0. Avalanche with its highest transactions per second, no limit on the number of subnets slash blockchains that can be created and the consensus can scale to potentially millions of validators all participating in consensus, scores three check marks. And Polkadot claims to offer more transactions than Cosmos, but is limited to the number of parachains around 100, whereas the Cosmos there is no limit on the number of hub slash zones that can be created. Cosmos is limited to a fairly small validator size of around 200 before performance degrades, whereas Polkadot hopes to be able to achieve 1,000 validators in the relay chain, albeit only on a smaller number of validators are assigned to each parachain. Thus, Cosmos and Polkadot score two checks. And down here, you can see some nice numbers to give you a nice quick little visual. So now looking at decentralization and comparing them across the three projects, looking at the far left with Cosmos, Tendermint consensus is limited to around 200 validators before performance starts to degrade. Whilst there is a Cosmos hub, it is one of the many hubs in the network 
and there is no central hub or limit on the number of zones slash hubs that can be created. In looking at Avalanche, Avalanche consensus can scale to tens and thousands of validators, even potentially millions, all participating in consensus through repeated sub sampling. The more validators, the faster the network becomes as the load is split between them. There are modest hardware requirements so anyone can run a node and there's no limit on the number of subnet slash virtual machines that can be created. Now looking at the far right, Polkadot. Polkadot has a thousand validators in the relay chain and these are all split up into a small number that can validate each parachain, which is a minimum of 14. The relay chain is the central point of failure as all parachains connect to it and the number of parachains is limited depending on the number of validators. They hope to achieve 100 as we touched on. Due to the limited number of parachain slots, significant sums of DOT will be needed to purchase to win an auction to lease the slot for up to 24 months at a time, thus like, likely to lead to only those with enough funds to secure a parachain slot. Parathreads are, however, an alternative to those that require less and a more varied performance for those that can't secure a parachain. So now looking at the results in regards to decentralization, Avalanche offers unparalleled decentralization using its consensus protocols that can scale to millions of validators all participating in consensus at the same time. There is no limit to the number of subnets and virtual machines that can be created, and they can be created by anyone for a small fee, so Avalanche scores three checks. Cosmos is limited to 200 validators, but no limit on the number of zone slash hubs that can be created, which anyone can create, and scores two checks. Polkadot hopes to accommodate 1,000 validators in the relay chain, as these are split amongst each of the, of the parachains. The number of parachains is limited and may be cost prohibitive for many, and the relay chain is ultimately a single point of failure. Whilst definitely not saying it's centralized and is, it is more decentralized than any others, just in comparison between the three, it scores only one check mark. And down here are some visuals, and now let's get into latency. So now looking at latency across the three different blockchains, starting off with Cosmos, Tendermint consensus using Cosmos reaches finality within six seconds. Cosmos consists of many zones and hubs that connect to each other. Communication between two zones can pass through multiple hubs along the way, thus also contributing to latency times depending on the path taken. It also doesn't need to wait for an extended period of time with risks of rollback. So now looking at Avalanche, Avalanche consensus achieves finality within three seconds with most happening sub one second and it is immutable and completely irreversible. Any subnet can connect directly to another without having to go through multiple hoops and any virtual machine can talk to another virtual machine within the same subnet as well as external subnets. It doesn't need to wait for an extended period of time with risks of roll. Now looking at the results in regards to latency, with regards to performance, far too much emphasis is put on just transactions per second as a metric. The other equally important metric, if not more important, with regards to finance is latency. Throughput measures the amount of data at any given time that it can handle, whereas latency is the amount of time it takes to perform an action. It's pointless saying you can process more transactions per second than Visa when it takes 60 seconds for a transaction to complete. Low, lat low latency also greatly increases general usability and customer satisfaction. Nowadays, everyone expects card payments, online payments to happen instantly. Avalanche achieves the best result scoring three checks. Cosmos comes with in second with a six second finality scoring two checks and Polkadot within 60 second finality, which may be 60 minutes for external blockchains scores one check. Now let's dive into interoperability. So touching on briefly for anyone who's not familiar with the term, it refers to the ability of different blockchain networks to exchange and leverage data between one another and to move unique types of digital assets between the network's respective blockchain. So looking at AVAX in regards to interoperability, a subnet can validate multiple virtual machines slash blockchains and all blockchains within a subnet share the same trust assumptions slash validator set enabling cross-chain interoperability. Interoperability is also possible between any other subnet with the hope Avalanche will consist of thousands of subnets. Now looking at DOT, interoperability is enabled between parachains through cross-chain messaging passing, also known as XCMP protocol, and is also possible to connect to other systems through bridges, which are specifically designed parachains or pair threads that are each custom made to interact with another ecosystem, such as Ethereum and Bitcoin, for example. Now looking at Cosmos lastly, Cosmos will connect hubs and zones together through its IBC protocol. 
Connecting to blockchains outside of the Cosmos ecosystem would either require the connected blockchain to fork their code to implement IBC, or more likely, a custom peg zone will be created specifically to work with a particular blockchain it's trying to bridge to, such as Ethereum, etc. Now looking at the results. So all three systems are able to perform interoperability within their ecosystem and transfer assets as well as data as well as use bridges to connect to external blockchains. Cosmos has different trust levels between its zones and hubs and can create issues depending on which path it takes and additionally added latency. Polkadot provides the same trust assumptions for all connected parachains, but has long finality and limited number of parachain slots available. Avalanche provides the same trust assumptions for all blockchains within a subnet and different trust levels between subnets. However, due to the primary network consisting of all validators, it can be used for trust. Avalanche also has a much faster finality time with no limitation on the number of blockchain slash subnets slash bridges that can be created. Overall, all three blockchains excel with interoperability within their ecosystem in each score two checks. So as you can see down below is a more brief reasoning as to why each score two checks. Lastly, just want to say thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your guys' support. Please don't forget to leave a like and hit a sub if you'd like to keep following for new videos and new content coming out. Also, please let me know down below if you guys kind of like this more presentation style. As I'm thinking, maybe it would be neat to start kind of building out templates and pamphlets almost that I can kind of do in a visual format and leave those to download for you guys or anyone that wants to take a deeper dive into learning crypto or learning more about that specific video. Thanks again, guys, and I will see you in the next one.